Hi everyone, welcome to another live stream event coming to you from Crypto Tips. My name is Heidi. I know, I know, where is Toby? I'll give you give you one guess where Toby is. Toby's surfing the big waves today. There was actually a WSL event earlier today, and so it's just been surfing city for like, you know, 72 hours here. So anyway, um, that's the joys of living life with a big wave surfer. So anyway, thank you everyone for tuning in to today's live stream. I know it might seem like there's a little, you know, something myth missing and it's Toby. So uh, we're going to work with what we got. So anyway, for those of you who are new, welcome to Crypto Tips. If you guys are loving these live streams, I appreciate it. If you hit the like button, that helps these videos get out uh, to a lot of people. So I'm going to do my best to try to balance talking to you guys and reading comments, getting questions when I can. If you guys do want to ask a question, I ask you to either at crypto tips me, like to, uh, to tag me in the comment, or just to like in all caps say question, and then type out your question just so it can get my attention and uh, I don't have to spend so much time trying to dig through the comments. So welcome. Um, we do have a lot to talk about today. Uh, <laughs> and so here we go. So let's talk about Dogecoin. Um, as always, links to all of the articles I'm covering today are available for you down below in the video description to read along. Um, I, there's this article titled Dogecoin Creator Points Out Strong Correlation with This Unusual Indicator. It got me. It's a clickbait title, but <laughs> the irony here is basically he's saying that there's a, a, a strong correlation between social media posts and the price movements of Dogecoin. And that to me, that says a lot about the lack of fundamentals of Dogecoin and just solidifying the fact that it is a meme coin for anyone who was on the fence about that. Um, for Dogecoin to go up, you need someone to tweet about it basically. And maybe Elon Musk has been a little quiet. Um, so anyway, I thought that was kind of a funny one. It's It's been confirmed. Dogecoin is a meme coin. It does well during bear markets. It doesn't have a lot of the other network effect type fundamentals that help coins continue to perform well and rebound better uh, during rough times like we might be seeing lately. Like for example, Ethereum, Solana, coins that are actually providing other platforms and ways for people to interact with cryptocurrencies rather than just buying and holding. Um, next up, this one, we gotta talk about Vulcan Forged. Uh, P-Y-R is the coin, is it? P-Y-R, P-R-Y, sorry, one second. PYR, that's what I thought. Okay. Anyway, Vulcan Forged. This one is a gaming platform type cryptocurrency, definitely new on the market. And this one was hacked uh, for $140 million. Not necessarily that the encryption was cracked and, you know, that happened, but basically the way that, that Vulcan Forged was designed uh, or it's functioning currently is that when you create an account to play these games or to interact with the network, they're actually creating wallets for you through a third party and that third party is the one being a custodian of the private keys for your coins in the wallets. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. Uh, definitely a red flag. This is definitely, this is also a coin that if you are in our CT club that we put a trade out, trade alert out a couple weeks ago, definitely just uh, speculating on the price. They're not going very much into this coin, but it's new on the market. And hopefully this is a lesson they will learn to always encourage people to take uh, custody, take ownership of their own coins. And that's done in the form of owning your private keys. 96 private keys were stolen. This was through, um, what was the name? Venly is the uh, third party uh, um, wallet management service. Apparently it's also used by Atari, Matic, and the Blockchain, Blockchain Game Alliance. Um, yeah, over 4.5 million PYR were uh, stolen. And they've been trying to, of course, use decentralized exchanges to uh, get this money uh, siphoned into, you know, their own ownership. Um, and it's saying here that, you know, they're, they're repaying people who had lost coins. They're reimbursing them through the treasury fund 
of this uh, community. So basically, you know, at the launch of this project, they had a certain amount of coins stuck away for their treasury fund. Usually that's, you know, reserved for projects that are helping to promote or to build on this platform. Now they're using 23% of the circulating supply. That's what how much was stolen. They're, they're replacing that with the treasury fund. Um, so that's a, that's a lot of coins that are now, uh, basically flooding the market of PYR. So something to pay attention to for sure. Um, the price went down from $31 to 24. That's 22% down. Um, I'm pretty sure this one's going to bounce back. They all usually do, especially during a bull run like we're in. Um, Oh, it's interesting here. You say, uh, we have contacted all exchanges to blacklist that address. It also seems the wallet owner may have KYC'd themselves on an exchange that we are now in contact with. So maybe it's a new kind of a hacker. <laughs> they didn't realize KYC is identifying yourself to whoever would want to know who you are and uh, what coins are in. So anyway, uh, let me go through your comments here, see if there's any questions. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in. Hey, if you guys like that video that Toby posted earlier this week, his uh, surfing video, let me know. Let Toby know. Let us know in the comments and we might be putting maybe more videos like that together. I know it's interesting to seeing Nazare from uh, that perspective. For those of you who don't know, we've been living here in Portugal for the past how long has it been? Six years, at least seven years now. Uh, we're here for the winter spells. We're here for the big waves and Toby loves it. So anyway, we have a lot of content. So if you guys are interested, we can put more surfing stuff up. Maybe like, I don't know, every couple of weeks or something, we can post one. Um, <laughs> AIM is asking, are we in a bear market? I'm going to say no. And there is also, you know, uh, evidence of, for that as well. Oh, my feed is only coming in one ear. Okay, I was wondering about that. I don't know, dude. I'm using OBS for streaming and I have yet to master the sound aspect of that platform. So uh, anyway, okay, so let's see. Um, so you're gonna have to deal with the one eared uh, sound today. Sorry, guys. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is Myanmar is adopting Tether as like their official currency. Um, this is a really interesting article. It's talking about the the um, NUG, which is like the shadow government of Myanmar, it stands for National Unity Government. Basically, they're trying to, uh, you know, fight against the current military regime there. And for them to do so, to transact freely, they're uh, creating Tether as that means of, of payment. Um, so I mean, in, on one hand, I'm kind of mixed about this, right? Because Tether being what it is and the history that it has and the shadiness behind that. But on the other hand, I'm sure, you know, what's been happening in Myanmar is pretty heavy. So any tool that they can implement to help alleviate that and bring a sense of freedom at all for the individuals there, that's great. But this is, um... Very, it's going to be interesting to watch. Hopefully, it turns out well. But the concept of you know, it's also it's also only in terms of their local economy that they're doing this. Um, but so anyway, ba let's think about basing your your economy on something like Tether. It's not Bitcoin like El Salvador. There is a big difference between Tether and Bitcoin. Um, you know, there's a lot of shady dealings of essentially especially because it's a centralized stable coin, not to mention one that is getting uh, more and more attention from regulators and, you know, who are essentially threatened by it, especially being a U.S. based stable coin, U.S. dollar based stable coin. They're on the, the uh, chopping block for the U.S. probably and, and whoever else is feeling threatened by stable coins. There's that. And there's also the fact that Tether has notoriously been really shady over, you know, declaring what is actually making up the reserves of that platform, of that coin, what is actually backing up the Tether 
on the market that is actually giving it its value on the market. Um, it used to be one to one to the U.S. dollar. It used to be completely redeemable for the U.S. dollar, and then now they're they're using a basket of different assets and other currencies, and they're you know they couldn't be less transparent about it. So for me. I mean, I just hope that this ends well for Myanmar and they can at least, um, uh, you know, this this can help alleviate some tensions that they're seeing there. Uh, it's saying the NUG was, or, was recognized as the official government of Myanmar by the French Senate and the European Parliament in October 2021. However, the United States hasn't made any move in this direction. The NUG's decision to accept and use Tether stablecoin could become a point of discussion among nations, especially at a time when the U.S. government is looking to impose strict stablecoin issuance policies. Again, there's a huge difference between using a centralized stablecoin as your reserve currency or as legal tender compared to Bitcoin, which is a decentralized cryptocurrency. Uh, a lot of that has to do with the control of the supply of, of again, the reserves of who is actually controlling, making those decisions versus a decentralized network that is Bitcoin. You know, the value that's derived, that, that Bitcoin is, is justified for is having to do with the mining, having to do with the scarcity, uh, the transferability of it, and ultimately now it's hedge against inflation. Um, so it's got a lot of it going for it. So, but I think most importantly, obviously, is is the fact that Bitcoin is decentralized. And so in that way, it's robust against any kind of future regulations that someone might try to impose on it. Uh, Tether, is it's not in the same boat. So anyway, I hope maybe they'll pivot over to Bitcoin or to whatever cryptocurrency that is decentralized, that is cheap and, and easy to transact with, because it seems like that's the solution they're looking for. Um, okay. Yoni has a question here. Should I invest in Bitcoin if crypto is 10% of my portfolio? The other 90 is high and low risk stocks. Well, I am speaking for myself and Toby. Obviously, we are a married couple. We have invested our money, you know, together. And as such, <laughs> what we're always saying is, you know, we're a bad example because we're very heavily in cryptocurrency compared to other investments that we have. So um, if you're curious to, I mean, I think that you should, first of all, understand your risk that you are willing to take on. You need to understand your time frame, especially if you're considering Bitcoin. Uh, what's your time frame for that investment? How much? Are, how long are you willing to hold it? How long are you able to hold it? Um, and from there, can you stomach the volatility? If you've just been on the sidelines for the past year, you've seen what kind of volatility can happen in Bitcoin. So you need to be able to be comfortable with that volatility so that you're not trading or buying and selling emotionally so that you're not chasing the top and selling at the bottom and losing money. Um, if you can just hold it in a secure way for many years, then I think it's an excellent investment opportunity. This is not investment advice. This is just for educational and uh, entertainment purposes only, of course. Um, but that's my two cents here. Um, Neil is asking, is Toby surfing this morning? Yes, Toby has been surfing since about what, like 10 o'clock? So going on seven hours, he surfed right through lunch. <laughs> I think they only took a break to fill up their ski with a bit more petrol. And uh, yeah, so he's still not back. So he's had a great day and he's going to be in a really chilled out mood. And that's amazing. <laughs> um, um, Joan is asking, could Toby put out a video on how he acquired his German passport? Uh, for that, like... Yeah, Toby obtained his German passport through descent. Um, his grandparents were German citizens, and it's actually a very personal and extreme story that happened there. Um, I'll ask him if he's up for it, but um, yeah, just a lot of uh, paperwork and waiting, basically. We, he applied for it about five or six years ago, and I think we actually kind of wrote it off that he would never get it, and then surprise, surprise, we got the email that he got it, so that was great. Um, another question here. Heidi, if all you have is $2,000, how would you invest it in crypto? Um, 
Hmm. Well, we did a few videos, you know, if I have so much money, which cryptos would we buy? Would we buy? If you've watched enough of those, I think you'd notice kind of a pattern. Also, if you are a Patreon member or if you're in the CT club, you have access to our own portfolio and you'd know, you know, uh, the coins that we're comfortable holding long term. So obviously you got to have Bitcoin, Ethereum. Those are solid. <laughs> um, off the top of my head, I obviously I did a video on Chainlink. I think that's a, a, a promising project to have as well. Um, yeah, uh, 2000, I mean, you don't have to, I, I'm really against this concept of trying to cut corners to take shortcuts with investing in crypto to try to find the profits that you feel like you've missed out on. Um, again, if you have a decent timeline for your investments, you don't have to be so, uh, so crazy with investing in crypto. I think Bitcoin and Ethereum are solid. Um, Okay. Uh, let's see, what are we covering next, guys? Um, oh, okay, crypto exchange Binance is leaving Singapore. Um, so, you know, we were talking about Binance back in, was it June, July, when it seemed like every government around the world was slapping it with <laughs> regulations and threatening to, you know, ban it from their country. So now Binance is turning into Mr. Compliance, right? It's a centralized exchange. It should be expected. How long did you really think they'd be getting away with that? For those of you who haven't been so active on your Binance account, maybe you're finally coming around to logging into it and you're getting met with maybe an email or with a little notification saying that, oh, you got to go through some KYC if you want to access your funds. If you don't, the only thing you're going to be able to do is withdraw your funds, which is great. At least they give you that much. But um, yeah, for those of you who are thinking Binance is the end all be all, it's a centralized exchange. I know Toby and I tend to have different op opinions on it and that's great. That's fine. Uh, but it's the reality of a centralized exchange now. And they're definitely pivoting to being, you know, uh, as compliant as possible you know, uh, while still trying to be kind of uh, attainable or usable, user-friendly for their users. But anyway, so they're they're pulling out of Singapore. And I uh, hear it's also saying Binance has doubled down on its plans to offer its products in the UK, which is interesting. Um, the Binance aims to become a registered service provider in the UK in the next 6 to 18 months. Um, he says we're fully re-engaged there. This is after I think they were kind of kicked out there. Um, we're making a number of very substantial changes in organizational structures, product offerings, our internal processes, and the way we work with regulators. Um, yeah, the the found uh, the headquarters of Binance has always been kind of a mystery, whether it's in China, whether it's in uh, you know the Caribbean somewhere, <laughs> whether it's in Singapore or somewhere in Asia. Uh, it's yeah, there's been a lot of rumors of like having just kind of shadow shell uh, companies and, and locations where there's people working there. But anyway, so maybe that's what they're talking about. They're reorganizing it. They're trying to be more legitimate, obviously trying to be more transparent. And that transparency comes from data, comes from information. Who is using their exchanges? What are they doing with their funds? I've always been very curious to see how exactly they could be offering higher staking rewards for coins on their exchange than is what, what is actually possible to be offered from staking on the actual network itself of the coin that they're staking. And uh, I think that's just a clever marketing scheme. They're actually lending those coins. They're not actually staking them. It doesn't have anything to do with the network. Um, so anyway... Maybe we're going to see a little bit more transparency from Binance. So in, on one hand, it could be really good. On the other, for those of you who are trying to get away with going through no KYC on Binance, trying to use a VPN um, to access Binance.com, let's say you're a U.S. citizen or you're in Canada or somewhere else where you have limited access to Binance.com, you're trying to use it through a VPN, now it doesn't matter. Uh, widespread. If you're using Binance.com, if you're using Binance.whatever, you have to go through a little bit of identifying information. So there's a heads up for you if you weren't aware. 
Um, Twin Wolf, good question. Hey guys, also Twin Wolf, shout out to him. He's a great moderator on our Discord channel. Uh, so thank you so much for your great work and always uh, trying to help those who are asking questions on our Discord. This is a good one. Which coins do you and Toby disagree on most? Loving both of your opinions. Um, <laughs> the most times that we're disagreeing about coins is like, it's basically when I haven't heard about it or I haven't had the time to research it yet and he's uh, really excited about it. That's all I'll say. So sometimes it takes me a little bit to get on board just because, you know, uh, that's just me. Uh, I don't feel comfortable in something until I know more about it. Toby is much more intuitive and, you know, just realistic, I guess, in terms of a bull market, understanding the trends that are going on. Um, yeah, so... Maybe I hold Toby back, <laughs> that's probably what he would say, uh, but it's okay. It's interesting. It's really interesting, I think, being a married couple and both being pretty active in crypto and having sometimes differing opinions, but I think it's good to to balance each other out or at least to you know, be presented with different perspectives and to question why you think things and how you might be wrong. It's always helpful, right? Um, Let's see. Sorry for the... Uh, the quietness right now I'm trying to read and I can't this is what I thought was going to happen if Toby wasn't here there'd be a little bit of radio silence um, okay huh um, Sergio he's asking any tips for a small investment stuck on Uniswap v2 liquidity pool I'm trapped by the fees I know v3 can be sold at OpenSea but not v2s um yeah, that's rough, especially on exchanges like Uniswap having to deal with MetaMask. That's where the fees are coming in. Depending what coins you're dealing with, I don't know what coins you're dealing with. If you're at all comfortable with holding them until the bear market, the fees are definitely going to drop during a bear market. So then you can actually afford to take them off. Whether, you know, the value of those coins are definitely going to be dropping if it's an altcoin. Uh, I mean, every coin is going to be dropping in value. But whether or not it bounces back, you're going to have to try to balance that out. Um, yeah, I should probably do a bit more digging on how to miti mitigate the fees on Ethereum. I really don't think there's very much wiggle room. Hey, guys. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> Toby just snuck in. Ah, oh, Toby. See ya. You survived. Sorry, I'm so late. Oh, here, I'll turn your mic on. There you go. All right. So what are we talking about right now? Answering questions. Oh, good. OK. Sorry, guys. I just <laughs> surfed. It was giant out there. It was like 50, hey, 60 foot high. Congratulations. All right, let's, let's get it into this. really good waves. Yeah. Did you get any footage, you think? Um, yeah. Yeah, some water footage. So there's guys on a on a awesome. jet ski taking photos from the side. You can't actually swim out there because it's so big and dangerous. Um, it, you just wouldn't physically be able to uh, swim out there. So yeah, there's a jet ski out there that takes photos of us. But anyways, let's let's get into some <laughs> questions here. Yeah. Um, oh, <sighs> average Joe. He's asking. Hugo helped call Solana. Very true. Uh, where has he been? Surfing with Toby? No. Oh, Nazare. Who goes around? He's around, but Hugo he's he's Solana, right? Yeah. Staying off the camera a little bit, but uh, he's Sol doing good. Solana is going to be around for a very long time. I mean, he, we called it really early, and um, I, I think he said, yeah, it was going to be in the top 10. <laughs> Still wet. I, oh, I'm soaking wet. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, it's going to be in the, we thought it's going to be in the top 10, but like, I, I think it's right probably going to be in the top three or four very soon. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, just think about it. Like, it, it kicks butt as a DeFi system. And um, how fast it is. It's crazy. And like $10 can, and can do a million transactions. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, M7 Freedom, good question. What's the most safe decentralized crypto wallet in your experience? I got to go with hardware wallets, whether it's Ledger or Trezor. Those are the top two, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think Ledger. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, I think I'm just used to it. Because no, I know one time Ledger or Le Ledger, the, the people at Ledger actually hacked into Trezor. Yeah, it was, that was a special situation. It was like if it was physically in the same room as the person trying to hack it, yeah. it wasn't like a remote hack. But um, I know a lot of people have been ordering Ledgers and they've been having issues with the battery overheating, which is a shame. Um, I've had quite a few people reach out to me about that. So hopefully they fix that issue. I don't know if they're issuing. I know that they've been like sending people replacement ledgers. 
But then I think those replacement ledgers also have the same issue. Anyway, um, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Trezor, a deep dive on that one as well. So keep an eye out for that I'm, one. I'm actually looking forward to that because I've actually never used a Trezor. Exactly. That's, so that's why we're always doing down. ledger tutorials because we've only ever used ledgers. So why would we do a tutorial on a wallet we don't use, right? So uh, Sergio, Toby, any all-time high waves today? Yeah, I got a really big one. I told my friend I knew a massive one too. So and Nick says, Toby, <laughs> do you park your ski in front of the house? No, I have a, I have it on a dock. That's that's really nice. It's out of the water and stuff. So it's perfect. So I don't need to drive any it anywhere. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. And, oh yeah. So anyways, if, if you, any of you guys are freaking out about the price today, like yeah. I got in, I'm like, I bet it's down. I bet it's down. There's no way whales are going to let, let it go right now. And so boom, this is what happened. So it went, I don't, I actually don't know how low it went, but before I went out the second time, mm -hmm. it was around like 46,000 and had one guy, the professional surfer out there like, Hey Toby, it's Bitcoin's crash. And I'm like, Hey, listen, this is the time to buy. The, you know, I, I just did a trade alert on our CT club saying, hey, you know, this is whales trying to scare weak hands out of the market. And and what I've been, what I've been saying, you know, like I don't think we're going to see a big pump this month. I just don't. Mm -hmm. And if we do, I'd actually be really surprised that the whales would allow something like that because what a better way. Everybody was like, oh, all-time highs in December. I actually thought that too. Most people thought it. I kind of got in with a hype. But then I realized, wait a second, if you're a whale, what's the best way to destroy confidence? Keep it under, mm -hmm. you know, hold it there and, and don't let it break. But I do think we've actually hit hit a bottom. Um, so that's just my opinion. Obviously, I could be completely wrong, but I do think 42K or 20,000 on who, who boy, I, I can't even say that. Who oh boy. Who boy. q o b Yeah, you would have been like, oh boy, when, when that <laughs> thing's dropping to 26, 28K. But uh, yeah. Um, do you know I had a question here, which is good. Which yeah. are your go-to platforms for stable coin yields? So for getting passive income with yeah. stable coins. I mean, BlockFi. If, yeah, BlockFi is a decent option for the centralized option. Celsius is also a decent option for a uh, centralized option. Or you can look at Aave and you can uh, operate that one through the Matic network or through Polygon, whatever they're calling it, uh, to save on the transaction fees. Also, uh, I'm going to be doing more uh, videos on DeFi platforms that are secure, most profitable, easiest to use, etc. on Ethereum, on Binance Chain, on Solana, Polygon, what have you. So keep an eye out for those videos. If you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, do so. So Jay Epps uh, says, uh, Toby, did you get some shade? I got one barrel. Um, <laughs> you so, did? Yeah, I did. Hold but the it, phone, tell me. I got one. I was right under it. But anyways, let's get, in, let's get into this. Okay, Soul wait, Ray. Wait, let's talk. Was that on Second Peak? That was on Second Peak. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank Is you. that like lately? Like Yeah, just like yeah, two ways. Yeah, it was cleaning up it really good crazy. right before. I couldn't stop watching. All right, let's get in the way. The crypto good. space. Okay. So yeah, Soul so Ray has been letting, letting me down. Okay, so, you know, with Solana and Radium, uh, keep in mind, this is a brand new uh, plat platform and, and brand new brand new uh, um, network. So, so you're gonna have to deal with like th growing pains for sure. Like this is just gr simple growing pains. You know, Ethereum went through that. Um, you know, with the DAO, <laughs> and yeah. Solana is going to be sometimes crashing. Sometimes you, every time something happens to it, be thankful for that because it's called attack vectors and or. It's called just bugs, you know, and bugs are fixable. You know, code is repairable. That's the best thing about crypto is that you can repair it. And these guys, they know not to screw <laughs> around because there's so much. Um, what's up? Someone said you still have your tags on your long johns. No, no. Toby's in his wetsuit right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> and it's unzipped. That's, okay. I don't care. So, so yeah, just keep that in mind that the, the growing pains are going to continue. But I think in the, during the long run, the more that it it keeps going and it doesn't fade back, the stronger it's going to get. And uh, I really hope Solana just goes crazy because, guys, I mean, think about it. It's 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 only at 150 but I don't even actually know what price it is now. It's like like a, a, under 200 bucks. That's a steal in my opinion. So, yeah, I'd be – I for, for me personally, I did a trailer on our CT Club today saying I am – Dollar cost averaging into a couple coins. Uh, one of the coins is a PYR and a Solana. Uh, 
Ethereum and Bitcoin and um, I think Avalanche as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty bullish on every freaking one of those. Only has a good question here. Is it possible for any centralized authority or government to stop the usage of private crypto wallets? No. no. Uh, unless they can somehow break the encryption of cryptocurrencies, which they cannot. Uh, they cannot They cannot control what you do with a wallet if you are the owner and controller of the private keys. It's the beauty of cryptocurrency. Uh, you don't need to register anything to... Oh. Right. <laughs> to create a wallet you don't have to tell anyone that you're creating a wallet uh you yeah so basically the best thing they can do is what they're kind of threatening to do a little bit was to uh have you if you're gonna a u.s citizen obviously if you're going to be withdrawing your coins off of a centralized exchange into a wallet if you were the owner of the wallet you have to prove that and the fact that they were requiring that just proves how much they don't know because you can't prove you're, as a, you're the owner of a private wallet because there's there's no uh, registering it uh, with your ID or anything. So, Which is why we love this space. Yeah. There's, it's something that people cannot take. Uh, governments can take anything of yours <laughs> except your private keys out of your head. So hallelujah for that one, right? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I think it's going to... Well, okay. Marcus <laughs> Maller says, I just got into this. I, I know, I'm kind you're of enjoying so excited. this. So, like, okay, crypto top mid 2022. Um, okay. I I would I would say that this could be a little bit different of a bull market. Um, uh, if we don't see an all time like uh, an explosion of price, and it continues to just kind of range and then go to a little bit more of an all-time high. So for, for instance, like uh, back in May or March or whatever, uh, it, w it went to like $66,000, $64,000, and then it went to recently $60, $69,000. But that was after a 55% drop. So, you know, this could be one of those times where it drops and then it goes back up again. Uh, to a more uh, like a higher high, like a 75 or whatever, and then drop back down again a little bit more and then drop or go back to, you know, 80 something thousand or whatever. Who knows? You know, this that that could be it because of the fact that, you know, exchanges have a three year low supply of uh, of Bitcoin. Why is that? Because big money's placing their their Bitcoin on cold storage or hardware wallets. They're not putting it on on the exchanges wanting to sell. Like these people that are selling right now are either traders, weak hands, or don't understand this space. But a lot of big money under, understands this space. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think we could actually go to mid-2022. Who knows? I could be wrong, obviously, but that's my guess. Like, why would, Why not? If it continues this way and, not, and doesn't go to a blow-off top, sure, sweet, bring it on. You know, like that's a long bull market. I'm going to love that. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions? Uh, like if to... somebody has low funds to invest $2,000, why would they go into ETH with, and with all-time high fees? Mm, that's a good question. I mean, you could just go to Solana. I mean, yeah. it's cheaper, but... Someone asked earlier, if you had $2,000, which cryptos would I buy? And I said, you can't go wrong with Bitcoin and Ethereum. But it's, it's, right about, it's true about the fees with Ethereum. But okay, okay. Okay, look beyond the fees a little bit. I know it, I know it's hard sometimes. If you only have $2,000, $2, I get it. That's, that's totally understandable to go ahead and do that. But, you know, you have to look at the total value locked into which which DeFi, DeFi platform has the highest yeah TBL. I think it's I think it's also important to understand that the transaction the famously high transaction fees that you're seeing with ethereum those are all dealing with DeFi or with yeah basically with web3 wallets if you're just buying ethereum and moving it from an exchange to your wallet those fees are usually pretty low it's not some hundred dollars or two hundred dollars those are people again doing liquidity providing or lending or buying nfts or whatever on it or yeah the, that's when the the fees are extremely extremely high um so don't yeah feel free to explore 
actually what the fees are for what you want to do with Ethereum too. Yeah, for, for instance, I w I've been buying uh, ENS uh, Ethereum name service uh, web uh, domains. Um, so it cost, you know, before this whole dump, it cost about, what was it like? Uh, like two hundred and thirty dollars to one hundred and eighty dollars, like on average, and now it's about it's about eighty eighty five to two hundred bucks, which is kind of nice, you know. Yeah. So I'm buying I'm buying a bunch of websites, um, yeah. uh, at least um, domains uh, on that. So that's that's one thing. If if you really believe in Ethereum and you think it's going to be a, a payment system, which I see it as a payment system as well, mm -hmm. that's where I would definitely be looking and i do we do own um uh a th ethereum name service you know oh, the, the coin, the coin yeah. as well yeah i'm not selling that no yeah. way i'm I'm actually considering actually holding that through a bear market yeah i don't sure. i don't know where that thing's gonna go it could drop 90 percent, like most of the alts are probably going to do during a bull market or mm -hmm. bear market but it doesn't matter for me because like for instance i have a bunch of eth that i'm not going to sell i'll write it all the way down i'm going to ride my big, most of my bitcoin down as well um it, that's just the the financial system uh, situation i'm in right now or we are in right <laughs> yes. now so, <laughs> so, uh, so. Excited. A good question here from the old fart uh funny name <laughs> the old fart. i love that <laughs> <laughs> is transferring or withdrawing Bitcoin from exchange to a hardware wallet a taxable ev event that the exchange reports? No, mm -mm. it's not taxable because all you're doing is moving it from one location to another. You're not exchanging it for another coin. You're not selling it for another coin. All you're doing is moving the location. So that is not a taxable event. So don't worry. Yeah. HR 777. I agree with you, man. It does hurt people for sure. Um, we're... It just flung upward. Oh, here. Yeah, the fees destroy granular economic sovereignty for poor, for poor people. It does. Um, and, but I do think that's where Solana comes in. Uh, because, also, Polygon. Yeah, absolutely. Polygon that's like and Matic. super cheap transactions I, as well for Ethereum. I'm so actually going through Polygon. We should probably be dollar cost averaging in that too. That's one thing I yeah. haven't actually done. Adding so more to Thanks Matic. for the uh, I mean, the Matic's been tanking, so it's a good time to buy that one. Yeah, exactly. But hey, that's fine. That's <laughs> this is when you want to buy, you know, not when everything's uh, so many people are attracted to high prices. I don't understand that. Like be be attracted <laughs> to when it's when it's low, guys, because you have to understand, do you really think this space is going anywhere? Do you really think Bitcoin's going to go to zero? Come on. Like yeah. please. There's countries buying this stuff. Why would it go to zero? Yeah. It's going to go back up and you're going to be kicking yourself. If you're selling right here, or not not dollar cost <clears throat> averaging, if you're if you're financially able to do that. Okay, good question here. I think maybe this will be the last. Okay, one okay, we wrap yeah, it up. sorry guys. Don't apologize. <laughs> MD Space D. What's the most degen things you do in DeFi? <laughs> That's such a good question. Um, going ham on ENS names. NFTs. We kind of face, we're not doing too much with the NFTs anymore, are we? Though no, we are bit. we? Well, we we're are a little bit. Yeah, oh, we're doing more. P PYR is an <laughs> NFT gaming. I know. Oh, yeah. we talked about that one today. Welcome, by the way. Did you hear about the uh, hack that happened? No. Tell me just see what happens. I go happen. surfing. There's a hack. But you know what? We got to make sure you didn't get your. <laughs> so so wait a second, stolen. really quickly. Was it a was it a hack against yes. the network? So basically, what happens when you create an account on Vulcan Forged? Your your wallets are created and managed by a third party company mm -hmm. and they were hacked. 96 okay. wallets were compromised. $140 million worth of PYR were lost. $140 million. Jeez. They're reimbursing those people who got whose wallets were uh, hacked yeah. with funds from their treasury fund. Okay. So basically 23% of the circulating supply was stolen hmm. and they're reimbursing that 23%. So they're probably going to buy a lot of land so the, on that. the price is going down. No, they're trying to do it through like centralized exchanges. And the guy, this hacker, they think that he went through KYC on an exchange he's trying to use to withdraw well, there, the There you from. go. <laughs> I'm not worried about PYR. Um, yeah, if it's down, I'm going to probably bounce buy back, some more, I think, for anyway. sure. Uh, so what's the most degen things you do in DeFi? What is degen? Degen. Like what's the most like, think of all the funniest memes you've ever seen about like the caveman face. I mean, I, yeah. Toby, you are DJ. What are you talking I am? about? I am okay. Well, I get into the crazy NFTs that are just really yeah. steep. But I was thinking of buying a paperclip. 
Remember when the paperclip was yeah, like and the rocks. I remember the rocks. Um, <laughs> oh my god! No. But we don't do we don't do too much of the farming and stuff though, do we? Uh, yeah, we, we're, we're farming right now on on radium, uh, like a little bit, but not yeah, much. The, it's the, not the like fusion what we're farming's into. epic because you can farm <laughs> and you can get two different coins at the same time. And while it's yes, getting blasted true. right now, the APRs are way better. Hmm. So yeah. Anyways, you gotta <laughs> okay. you gotta keep that in mind. Anyways. Thank uh, somebody, you, somebody asked oh, about okay. uh, really quickly. Somebody asked about uh, Cardano. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I think it's definitely a buy right here. I don't think Cardano is going anywhere. Charles is gung ho at, at friggin' getting his uh, entourage out there and, yeah. and kicking butt. So, yeah, yeah uh, we'll see. But hey, I am definitely uh, very bullish on Solana and those other coins that I told you about. But anyways, we should probably go. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into this lovely live stream. I'm yeah. so glad that you popped in. I was driving end. so fast. Oh, I'm like, tell please me don't let oh. somebody be in front of me. I really got to make safe. this. And hey, no, I was safe. Hey, it's all good. But, you um, know what's funny? Sorry. Right before I came down here, I saw the, the giant trailer for the WSL was leaving. Okay. I was like, bye. See yeah. you later. See you later. Hey, good. It's kind of annoying. Full rant here. They were like owning Nazare. Like you weren't allowed on the beach. It was oh. a big pain. No, we got it. Bye, guys. <laughs> I'll miss you till next week. Anyway, we're signing off now. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you guys enjoyed these live streams, please hit the like button and hit subscribe. We're putting out videos every single day. So, yeah. Thank you for checking out Crypto Tips. We'll see you later. Bye.